Hello! Today I will teach you how to play the game called Dune Shadow Emissary. So this is the game that is uh, basically a sort of the expansion to the Dune Imperium but also completely a uh, new game based on that and it is set in the timeline between the Dune Imperium and Dune Uprising. So in this game, uh, for one to four players, it is possible to play with Automa, you are going to be one of the small houses uh, and you're going to have uh, conflicts on different parts of the Dune Imperium in different planets or the cities on the planets, fighting a war between um, assassin, spies or saboteurs. So it is not a big like a conflict like uh, in Dune Imperium, for instance, where there are armies, he is there. In this game, it's more like a secret agents. All right. So, uh, to be able to play this game, you ha have to have a good knowledge of Dune Imperium, uh, how that game works, and all the iconography and however how the building works and stuff like that. But here you will see that there are like actually lots of uh, changes, changes in that gameplay. So let's start with the setup. To set up this game, and in this example, I'm gonna do a setup for three players. Uh, first, uh, each player will take one of these banner cards, these large banner cards, uh, which have these four banners. In the color of that house in this case this is a house building and these conflict tokens also on the banner uh, each player also has 12 uh, his uh, assassin spies or however you want to call them we're going to just call them troops uh, also each player has his uh, house mentat this is the first card you can have in your hand and each card for the house is a bit different where they are different by the bonus they give in the center and by the special ability you can activate. So there is a little uh, asymmetry between the houses. Also you will have these two tokens that I use to select actions and to track, track your position in the Lancerad track and you will have your four agents and each house has the same four just in their colors. So your agents are concubine, a spy, a mentat, and a swordmaster. So, to set up the game, you're gonna take your banner and all of this stuff. You're gonna take your starting card and your agents into your hand. And each player will place his uh, little token, he, one of them here on this uh, Lancer track, on this faction board. The other one you're gonna keep uh, when you and gonna be used when you're selecting actions on this faction board. You're also gonna put two troops in your garrison, which is this circle of space in on your banner card, and you're gonna start with one spice and one solari. So these are the resources we use. Uh, so that's the first thing you need to do. The second thing is, after shuffling all of these uh, decks, you're gonna draw a special Intrigue Shadow Emissary card. So each player we're gonna draw one, and this is actually hidden. So you're gonna check who in your hand who, who you're working for. In this case, let's say I'm working for Bene Gesserit. And this is a card that used for the end game scoring. So you're gonna keep this close by, but hidden from other players. Uh, you gonna fill in this Imperium row with the five cards from the top, top of this Imperium deck. And you're gonna, after shuffling, uh, place three locations from top to bottom and from left to right. Three locations are used for two and three players and four locations are used for four players. So we're gonna place them like this. And then lastly, 
we're gonna shuffle this deck this house of dominus deck and this is only used to determine who's gonna be the first player because it's always random and each player is gonna draw a card and then you're gonna check this number on the card here and whoever has the biggest number is gonna be the first player and then you just set this deck away because you don't have to use it unless you choose to also play with automa which i'm going to explain later so that would be the setup for uh three players same setup that is done with the two players and as i said with the four players there will be one more location in play so whoever is the first player will take this uh, first player token and then we can start now with the two player game uh, you have to, the game ends when someone collects four of these locations with the three and four player game the game ends when someone collects three of these locations so at the end of the turn when that happens the game ends and then you have a final scoring and this is how the game progresses through each round and i'm going to use a little token here just to walk you through so each round you're going to have auction then you're gonna after that send one agent after that there will be another auction and after that you're gonna send the rest of your agents last is the conflict resolution and recalling all agents and cleaning up so let's go through each of these uh, round phases so auction is pretty simple and you are not mandatory to do the auction uh, how it goes is the first player will take one of his agent cards and set his face down. You are bidding with this uh, political power here. As you can see, Concubine has one, Spies is a two, two Manta is three, and Swordmaster is four. So every player that wants to be in auction, as it's it comes to his turn he's gonna take one card from his hand and set it face down in front of him and it goes from the first player and then going uh, clockwise uh, so so the next player to the left and so on until everybody either put a card in front of them or skip to do that because you do not have to go on the auction naturally you want to do that because the auction is the only way to get these cards from the imperial row into your hand and then use them later to send your rest of your agents on the errands on these locations and to be able to go into the, these conflicts so after every player puts the card down you're gonna flip up and whoever has the highest number will be the first to take one card from the imperial row or the top card from the deck if you don't like anything in the imperial row so you can also go randomly but you will not see what you're taking if there are two or more players that bid the same amount of this political power the tiebreaker is whoever is holding is the first player token so if you have a first player token you're gonna be the first even if you tied you're gonna be the first to go for the card and same the thing whoever is sitting left of you if uh, maybe two players across play the same card the player on the left from the first player again breaks the tie and he's gonna go first for the card after you take the card from the imperial roll this imperial roll does not fill in so you're gonna take the card in your hand and the agent that you use for bidding is set right from your banner uh, it's set face up and he is, is he is considered exhausted but that's important thing so that would be auction phase after that you go to sending an agent phase sending only one agent in this phase again you can skip to do this but you probably wanna maybe send an agent on the errand you do this by playing these cards in front of your banner like this and you're sending an agent to the icons that correspond to the icons on the location cards just like in the dune imperium what is important is that just like in Dune Imperium, if you want to send your agent on a location where you have to pay also something, you need to have that much to pay. You cannot send an agent, take the bonus and then pay for 
sending them on that spot. No, you have to ha be able to pay in advance before sending an agent. Meaning that if I'm sending agent here, where I need to pay one spice, I need to have one spice. Uh, like I cannot get it from uh, like the same space maybe to just pay for it. That's important. So after playing your card, you're gonna take one of the arrest agents from, from your hand and you're gonna send it to the corresponding space. So let's say in this case, I maybe uh, send my mentat here. When sending these agent, I suggest you place them like this, like they are like tapped because they take a let much less space like that on the table. Like this is a bit, you know, it's gonna make some problems. But you, if you put them like that, that's fine. Uh, keep in mind again, it must correspond to the icon, just like in Dune Imperial. After you send an agent, you have a lot of things you can do. First of all, uh, you will get the bonus from the space where you send an agent. Uh, you will also get the bonus from the middle on this uh, little banner on the on the card and if you send your agent to the correct spot for that agent like in this case you will also get the bonus from the card of your agent when taking these bonuses you can take them in any order you want so for instance i can take this entry card first then i can get a guard card from a discard pile and then i can get a card this means uh this one here means I get a card from the Imperial row again either what's here or whatever is on the top of the deck and I can also in this case here as you can see unexhaust one agent these are the agent that were used for bidding so these are the exhausted agent these are the agents that are like already on the job so I cannot get these back only these that were used for the auction I can get them back in my hand and this will also give me troop. Keep in mind that the bottom part of the card also can be used in this in this time. So after you send an agent, it also opens the ability to activate the bottom of the card. And it so if I had in this case it says any faction token, I get additional uh, entry card and the troop. But if I don't have that token that's fine because next time when I send the agent maybe with the other card I can still activate the bottom part or maybe this one here it depends so every time you send an agent you will also have an ability like that's the time frame when you can also activate all the bottom parts on the other cards that you already played if you played on the conflict space you will be able to send any troops that you get from any bonuses to then conflict plus two from your garrison up to two so you can decide how much once you send troops to the conflict you also have to take one of your conflict banners and place it on one of these spaces doesn't really matter which one but once it is there and if it is exchanged with the banner of your house later on then you're gonna send to that space constantly so this just reminds or other players that you in in the conflict now there could be uh, a chance that you don't have a troops but you went to the conflict space you will still place your conflict uh, sword here because you can actually win a conflict conflict uh, even if you don't have a troops why maybe you're holding the first player token remember it always decides who's going to win the conflict. So if the other players don't manage to send troops here, or they manage but you kill them off, even if you don't have your troops in the conflict, but you are in the conflict, it will be considered a, a tie, and you are breaking ties. This also breaks the ties for the people on your left and so on around the table. So keep in mind about that. So that would be sending an agent phase. Then we go again to the auction phase where this field will flip, uh, fill in. So any cards that were taken will be replaced. And be careful to always place the card from left to right and just fill them from left to right. You'll see it is important, especially when you're playing with the automa. During the second phase, same thing. You can 
send one of your agents to bid or not you can skip same thing you will get another card it will go in your hand doesn't really matter i'm just going to take one and after that you will be able to send the rest of the agents but as your turn goes around from one first player to the other you will be able to send one agent so first player will send one then the second player will send one until again it comes to you until you cannot send any more agents then you're gonna just skip after all players send all their agents or choose not to you can all again do that for some reason if you want to do that we are going to the conflict resolution phase and before i go to conflict resolution phase i will explain also how can you go to these factions actions so anytime you send an agent with the doesn't doesn't have to correspond to this uh, icon here it might just need to be the correct agent so once when i send the method i will be able to also go to the space here where the emperor is because they like methods there then you have multiple things you can do but to be able to do them i will just simulate that i have some cards in my discard pile if you have some cards in your discard, discard pile you can always look through them other players cannot look through them but you can so you can always look what you have here and to be able to do this action you will notice you always have to pay some political power so how you do that after you send an agent and take all the bonuses or maybe in between because again uh, you can do this in any order so but you will probably want to take all the bonuses so you can completely pay for here, here you will place your little other oval disc here and you will choose one of these actions as you can only do one so for instance i might want to get sardukar legion and pay five solaris and take troops in the garrison it is important that some troops go to garrison and some actually go to any conflict or it's just it says current conflict current conflict is a basic con a conflict where you have your troops any conflict means just that any where you have or don't have troops and garrison is always your garrison so keep in mind about that because some cards just tells you uh how to get garrison some cards like this one the special ability it says take from a faction or player meaning that you can take one of these tokens from a faction board or from a player some other things uh, like uh, whenever you have a card that uh, tells you that uh, you can take a let's say it is a bonus on the imperial deck if it's if it's just a icon here without text uh, take from a player that means you can only take it from the faction it will be strictly uh, set where you can take it so if if there is a like a icon with a token of the faction without the text it always means from the faction board so i would pay five Sol solaris and i would get troops or i might pay three political power to take one of these tokens which in this case you can see it will push me forward two spaces on this Lancred track now once you get to the end this action will not be useful to you anymore because you cannot go more than this any token you take you're gonna take it and keep it in your uh, inventory you can keep it below your board you can also keep your resources here and all all the stuff uh now important thing is that uh, uh, you have to have political power to pay and let's say i went here to take one of these token i need three political power you can either i can either take this card which is a three and for a better example let's see oh here's a good example so either i can pay with this one card which already have three power or i can combine two cards like this uh, Pal palace uh, physician and other superior one plus two that's three these cards will go into your stash uh, for the purpose of the game they're out of the game but for your purpose they are 
scoring stash they will be used at the end of the game you probably want to keep them face down so the other players cannot see how much maybe points you have there so that would be the sending agents so let's go to the conflict resolution space during the conflict resolution again each conflict will be resolved going from left to right and top from bottom so this is our first conflict space this is our second this is our last and what happens is let's say there are some troops here oh by the way before i explain that if you have any entry cards which are plots so every time during your turn which always go around you can play any number of plot cards but these combat plot cards let's find one you can only play during the conflict resolution space so in this case if player has a combat card and it is he it is his turn he can choose to play one or pass if he passes he loses the ability to play the combat card because it's not gonna go when it goes around it could it is considered that he chooses not to so you have to decide do you want to play them right away or maybe keep them for maybe some other turns and you can play them multiple of them if, if you want to uh actually yes it it's like that so you can play one and then when it turns comes to you you can play another one and so on and so on but you can always play one during this conflict resolution phase so what this word means the combat in this game works are pretty different every sword one sword will kill one enemy troop so these two will kill two of the blue and every rest of the sword every two will give you ability to put another troop from not from your garrison but from your supply in the conflict so if i play this ambush i will kill these two guys and get another guy here so three troops here if let's say i didn't play any combat cards and this was the thing during the conflict phase every troop will kill other troops so let's uh, make uh, a bit example like this so one green one red and one blue they will kill each other and then one red and one blue will kill each other this will clear the conflict spot but keep in mind again if you have a first player token you break the tide so if the red was in this conflict and uh, blue also let's say blue also was in this conflict and the green was in this conflict if, if it was like that no one has a troops but red has a tiebreaker so he wins this conflict other players will take the their uh, conflict tokens immediately back and red's gonna do that too and he's gonna put his banner here so he is one banner away to completely take this location and then you go to the next location card and so on and so on keep in mind that it can happen that if you spread too much with your banners you will not be able to place them so for instance if i have something like this and i want a conflict here and i need to place uh, actually good bad example let's say like this and i want the conflict here and i need to place a banner and i can't there is one thing i can do but it is very costly and it can be done this action here can be done anytime during during uh during the turn so if i have to place a banner i might decide maybe to pay two political power here to remove this banner and just be able to place it here get it back and be able to place it there and also get some spice so there is this action that can help you with this so after we resolve all of this the last thing we're gonna again check each conflict to see did someone actually want any cards let's say red won this card red would take it 
and put it in his stash. Again, he can place it face down if he wants to, so just to hide the number of his points. If there was any cards with this little icon here, which means uh, there are conflict cards involved, anyone who was involved in this conflict, let's say there was a red and maybe green, might get some additional stuff. You're gonna draw a card, so it's better before you remove these to just put the card close by before you remove these tokens so you still know who was in the conflict and uh, first place will get the point in this case and the second place will get the entry card there is no third or fourth places just so you know after you clear all these uh, cards you're gonna get your banners back by taking them let's say red to call so this one and then cleanup phase also involves taking all the troops back to your supply because all troops in the conflict will die you get your troops in the supply every player is gonna pick up their agents and back into their hands including their exhausted one uh, all the cards that you play gonna go into your discard pile and if there was some tokens on the cards, they will be returned to the faction board. Or if there was some, maybe you have to pay with some spice, they will also be returned to the to the spice or solari supply. So that's how you get your cards in your discard pile. This means that at the first turn, you will not be able to go to the faction board. But from that turn on, you will, these options will be available to you. Keep in mind that other players cannot go on the space where you already sent your uh, little token. So green cannot use this, so you can only go here, here or here. So that's a cleanup phase. And then any card in the Imperium row during a cleanup phase will be discarded. And then new five cards will be put here. So Imperium Row is going to fill, be filled in with new cards and first player token is going to go to the player to the left and you're going to again go with the auction phase. Now keep in mind that it can happen that some players change the order like who's going to be the first player because whoever takes the token during the previous turn, the last token from the faction board, he immediately also get the first player token. That's a powerful move because it will give him ability to break ties. So he might be even bolder to go into some uh, conflict that he might be even in power or maybe even lose them with time. So keep in mind with that. So that's how you play the Dune Shadow Emissary. Game, as I said, ends. Uh, with the two player you need to collect four locations. With three and four player, you need to collect three locations. Once on that turn you collect that much locations, the game ends, and then the scoring starts. When you score, everybody's gonna reveal their who they were working for, who, who are the who's the shadow emissary for which faction, and uh, it works like this. If I was working for Ben and Jesuit, any card in my discard pile and in my stash, we're gonna combine them together. And any card with Bene Gesserit prefix will, with the power of three, and keep in mind you can combine, will give me one point. So basically you will count all these uh, political power together and then just... Uh, it, uh, Not multiply, I can't remember how to use divide. Yeah, divide by three. Also, during that time, you're gonna add any political power from here because this is considered to be also political power of your faction. So, here I would have four, six, nine. So, additional nine together with any Bene Gesserit here, split by three. And there are no rounding up, you just basically split the number and, and that's what you got.
Then any location card that has this little banner will give me additional points. So I will check my locations as I fought for and might get more points. Also any point from this Lancer and track will be added to that. And lastly, if I'm holding these faction tokens at the end of the game, they're going to be worth three points. So if I'm holding these when the game ends, because when the game ends, they do not return to faction board, but just because of this, this ending scoring, I get three points for those. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Tiebreaker again is who was holding the first player token. So keep in mind with that. Uh, uh, another thing, if you don't like the, this rule with the tiebreaker, whoever hold, was holding the first player token, uh, then you can tie break with the spice, then Solaris, and last thing, I don't know what would be. But as I said, this part of the game is still in work in progress. Maybe we should stick to the Dune Imperium part where the tiebreaker is the spice. That's all I can say about that. Uh, all right, the last thing I'm going to explain is how the Automa works. And I'm going to do that actually in the separate video. You can use Automa with two players, three players. If you wish, you can play solo. That's how it works. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Goodbye.